Hey, it's Brian. And now it's Brian. Brian again. Hey, how are we doing? Hope everyone's having a good time. Uh, it's Friday. What can we say? It's Friday. I hope everyone's had a great week. We've had an exciting time. We did Winning Wednesday with Justin James. Hope everyone caught that uh, great episode. Uh, scholarships. There's a lot of scholarship money out there, and it's available. And all you have to do is apply. Get your athletes to apply. Help them apply. Help them reapply every year that they're in college. Great stuff. Go check that episode out. Uh, while you're doing that, also go over to our uh, show notes and uh, uh, check the link out for the right profile. Uh, you know, <laughs> we talk a lot about training, but what people fail to uh, mention sometimes when they're talking about all the physical training is there's also mental training that goes along with uh, becoming a great athlete. And the right profile has put together a really great system, very complete and very very concise they can identify your personality how you train identify your coach identify your parents and help you all work together as a unit more cohesively so that you can become a better athlete and or you can help your athlete become a better athlete or you can help your coach become a better coach it all works together and it's in the right profile go check it out get the assessment 99 dollars a year for the mental gym you can't beat it uh, you know, a sports psychologist is going to run you in, you know, anywhere from uh, you know 225 to 500 bucks a pop. So you know, go with one that's. Uh, I mean, he's got a big name. Dr. Trotwine's got a big name in the industry. I go with something that's tried and true. Uh, Bill Belichick, yeah, you, you can't go wrong. So go check that out. It's in the show notes. While you're checking out the scholarship information, go ahead and get the assessment and uh, check uh, on getting yourself enrolled into the mental gym. It'll really, uh, it'll really do to your, yourself and your gym, a lot of good. So, Brian, how are you this week? Uh, I've been busy. <laughs> it's been been really busy. Uh, we've we've been cranking it out in the gym. Uh, one of my assistant coaches ended up with strep yesterday. So nice. Kinda, Always good for that to happen in the summer. It was Yikes. great, you know. And on one of my on our busy days too. So it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and i heard you uh, you are now uh you know safe sport uh, certified uh and, oh, I and all i yeah. am you, you know, feeling better it, about that you feeling good ah uh, i feel something uh <laughs> Yeah, well, we already had enough cutting up before the show about that one. So, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, our, our friend Matt Austin uh, sent us a message uh, after uh, after our show. What was that? A couple of weeks ago. And he said, hey, you know, junior Olympic, junior elite, technical sequences, junior development, future stars. OK, well how do you figure out which path to go on how do you start getting your program in in line how do you start figuring all this out we have so many options which is the right one and today i thought we'd just uh you know kind of see if we could break it down a little bit and make it simple yeah so uh you know you know for me it was really interesting because because i think this is the first year i'm diving like seriously deep into the whole future stars junior elite um, uh, system. Uh, I've had, I've had some pretty good athletes, but I haven't really, I felt like I really just didn't have the athletes that, uh, I had the time or that were driven enough to really do the future stars or the junior elite thing. Um, or I felt like, you know, maybe, maybe they had the drive and the motivation, uh, but they, the parents didn't have the money or they didn't have, uh, the time. And I think I think the biggest thing that we're dealing with when we're talking about future stars and junior elite is is do we have the time? Um, and it, it turns out like this year I think I'm gonna have like I'm gonna have like four or five maybe six uh, future stars athletes and, and those athletes because they're all like that level eight um, uh, or level nine first year level nine uh, group that can that can really be good junior elite athletes. And uh, one of the things I've learned after like doing specific workouts for those athletes, because that's how I had to do it. You know, I have like their normal workouts and then I do two mornings a week from seven to nine in the morning, only two hours. And I spend that time with those athletes that are going to participate in future stars or junior elite. And we come in and it's a really light workout and we just work on those tech sequences. And I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I've learned that um, it, it flows very seamlessly from compulsory, uh, uh, into junior elite if it's approached correctly. 
Um, I don't know if you do something similar, Brian. What do you guys do? Well, for our guys, you know, Gene has his own process that he goes through and he charts everything. I mean, he has a chart for everything. He charts flexibility. He has flexibility testing. He does it uh, once a month. He has strength testing. He does that once a month. He has skill testing in the summer times, an off season time. He does that once a month and he charts these things. And it's all based on the athletes. And the other big chart, the attendance. And he charts the down to if you're there. Uh, if we have a four-hour practice, but you come and you're there for three hours and 15 minutes, he puts that you were there for three hours and 15 minutes. It's very precise. But he charts all this. He takes all the information, um, you know, about uh, August, let's say, and he starts putting together the guys that are going to do or are going to try to do each, each, you know, different path. If you're future stars guys, our junior elite guys, the JO guys. Uh, he does this all the way down level. Are you going to be level seven? Okay, let's see. You're level six, you're moving up. Okay, how much time did you miss over the summer? How many skills are you missing? How, all goes together. And he starts making these decisions in, in mid to late August, and then we move into uh, doing future stars. Now, they're already working the skills. All of them as a group are working You know, the skills for the future stars um, and the tech sequences. They're all working them. However, the ones that are having success and starting to put together more than just one skill at a time, start to gather some sequences, um, start to gather half sets, that type of thing. Those are the ones that are going to be, you know, charted higher. And, you know, he also looks for that commitment. Like you said, are you going to put in the time? And, you know, Gene's one of those guys. He will be in the gym. He would be in the gym, I think, like 70 hours, 80 hours a week if his wife would let him. I, I don't doubt he would be. Uh, he, he loves working out. He loves training the guys. He loves to give them the opportunity. But he he also is one that he looks at the time they're in the gym, looks at the time they're resting. He looks at all these different things, and that's how he makes decisions on how he's going to do it. I think we're only going to have maybe of our younger guys, uh, level, set, level six, seven, eight, I think we'll probably have four that do the Future Stars program. And I think that's going to come because, I mean, we have some of our guys, we have a couple of them that are out for six weeks of the summer. You know, 11 weeks summer, they're gone for six. So um, that time element that you mentioned is really, really critical because that much time out of the gym, you cannot do these these sequences uh, to the level that they're going to be, need to be done or executed to where you can actually be successful or even be competitive with the rest of the guys in the country that are doing these, uh, you know, going that path. So time plays a big part in it. Skills, strength, flexibility. You know, Future Stars has a big flexibility part. You know, Lancey Spielkamp, you know, if she comes and judges your, your guys on splits, you may think you're doing good splits until Nancy comes and judges your splits, and then you find out that your flexibility stinks, and you need to go back to the gym and work harder. Um, it's just it's one of those things. It's how much time you're going to put in. You know, you know, Brian, when I look at the, the future stars and the, the junior elite programs, you know, the biggest question I always ask myself when, I, when I'm looking at a program is why? You know, wh- why would I want to spend the, the effort and the time working this with the with the child or the athlete? And uh, and whenever I, I've approached it, I've always found it as a tool that identifies holes in an athlete's development. You know, so, you know, especially in that transition, whenever they're transitioning from uh, like the 10 year old future stars program into 11, where they're actually doing tech sequences, um, you know, that I think is like the golden zone, because if you can get them to transition uh, into that level eight mentality with the JE behind it, you're going to start identifying huge problems or potential problems down the road, whether it's just as simple as a Cody on trampoline, you know what I mean? All of a sudden that, that 12 year old needs that Cody and you're realizing, Oh no, we're supposed to be doing a, a Sukahara or a cause this year. And they can't do a Cody on trampoline or they're terrified of it. Uh, that's going to be a really big problem down the road. Um, or, you know, for whatever reason they're, they're, they can't do an Arabian on the floor. You're going to find like weird little holes. And, and whenever you have an athlete that you think is going to be like 
really good. Gonna gonna make your team, or they're gonna make it to that next level, um, or they're gonna be a national participant, and, and they're gonna do that with ease. Maybe it's time to go and look at JE and go, okay, I'm gonna use this. I'm a trainer over the summer. Uh, that way, when I walk into season, I know we have it. I know I'm not missing any steps. Um, you know, like for instance, like pommel horse. You know, as soon as they're doing that, the the four four four, the four 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 mega. Uh, you know, I have my guys start immediately on the 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 fifteen year old pommel horse set. They got to get circle, and they got to start the stock stockly, and they got to do the DSA, or the DSB, the check here, the Schwab and flank. You know, they got to start all that development because it gives them that goal at the end, and they and they feel like they're doing something greater than themselves at that point. Well, you know, you mentioned something really good is the goal, mm-hmm. and I think you know we talked about it as we opened the show uh, with the you know with talk about the right profile and some of the mental aspects of the game one of the mental aspects of gymnastics is what is what is it that you know the, these athletes when they get to this this level the the sevens the eights the nines the tens when they get to this level what is their goal what is their mindset for what they want to do with gymnastics some kids want to be in gymnastics because they love the sport they love doing it they want to get pretty far but they don't really necessarily want to be up there with the JEs and put in the time uh, and the effort and the energy it takes to compete at that level, they would rather just, you know, have enough, another path and, and be a little more relaxed and be competitive in the junior Olympic program. So, and uh, again, what are the mom and dad's goals? What's their mindset towards gymnastics? Because the mindset towards gymnastics, if you're in it to win it, then it becomes a lot easier to, start incorporating some of these things and you as you said identifying those holes and those gaps and start getting them handled and taken care of but it again comes back to time comes back to your commitment to what you're doing uh comes back to are you going to do those that second uh workout of the day you're going to do those two a day workouts are you going to put in those extra efforts what is the mindset so when we're talking about all this stuff and, and to answer you know matt's question you know, it really boils down to who are you as a coach and who are your athletes and who are the athletes' parents? Do What are they expecting out of the sport? If they're expecting the, the child to get to the top level and actually be able to compete at those top levels, they've got to understand what that's going to look like and what that's going to take. That means sometimes the summer vacation is going to have to happen in May or early June, and they're going to have to be here the rest of the time, no family vacations. They're going to have to understand that there's some sacrifice that's going to have to be made for a short time. Gymnastics only is there for a short time. So they're going to make these sacrifices and kind of take a gamble on can they get the outcome they're looking for. And, uh, you know, if you're willing to try for it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. But I think all these questions come into play as to which one of those paths, you know, that I named out, Junior Olympic, Junior Elite, Junior Development, which path are you taking? And why are you taking that path? Because each one of them has reward. Each one of them requires sacrifice. Each one of them requires effort and time. How much is dictated by which one you take? Yeah, you know, you know, Brian, there, there, there's a lot of incentives to, to be a JE or a future star athlete. Um, and I think one of the, it, it can be a very valuable tool if you have a kid who's super talented, who, who struggled on a few events, um, and, and then you go back and you go ahead and you spend those that extra few hours a week or four hours. In my, in my case, it ends up being four hours. Um, and, you know, you put them in a situation where, you're, hey, I really want you to be a junior elite. Um, if, if, even if you don't compete, I really want you to at least learn the routines. And then you start feeding them this stuff. And all of a sudden, you're going you're gonna to be on an event and you're going to realize they're, they're gonna realize I have to learn this skill that my coach has been trying to get me to learn for six months so that I can be a JE. You know what I mean? Um, I'm I'm really ner- it's like I'm really nervous to a back tuck off the side of P bars, but that's a requirement. And now all of a sudden, my coach has me in here early, and I can't work the rest of the P bar set until I have this back tuck. So we got to go and we have this time uh, to work on those little small little areas. You know what I mean? I'm like, I I don't want to name names, but I got this kid that came in he, at level ten. He was a JO last year. He was a little weak, a little JO, but he did really well on a lot of. He's really strong in vault. Um, and, and all of a sudden on pommel horse, he's like, oh, I have to do this stock. My coach has been asking me to, you know, do that, that direct stock there. And um, 
all of a sudden this week, oh, it's in my routine. I guess I'm going to have to learn it and start doing it. And all of a sudden you start enjoying Pomelo. So there's, there, I think there's a lot of benefits. And and one of the benefits is you can't get away from some of this stuff. You can't just avoid it like you would with a JO athlete. A JO athlete, you go, oh, well, you know, you're really not strong in this. Let's see what we can do to work around it. When you bring that kid into the JE or the future star realm, you have to confront it. And you're confronting it with something, with a cookie at the end, you know, a carrot on a stick at the end. No, it's absolutely right. And figuring it out is, you know, doing all the things we've talked about in the episode so far. It's, you know, uh, who are you as a coach? What do you want out of your program? How are you going to guide and develop your athletes? How are you going to guide and develop your parents? How are you going to guide and develop yourself so that you can create this? You've obviously, you know, made a choice that, hey, I want good athletes. I want to be able to compete at the top levels. I'm going to guide them towards this and i'm going to see who who really wants to do this and, and take this journey with me to to you know compete at those levels and you know it's it's kind of a give and take but at the end of the day there's a lot of rewards to doing it i mean to go to that that camp at uh, at ou i mean that's a big reward for those je's and a lot of fun they get a lot out of it but you know they also improve their gymnastics exponentially at all those training camps. So there's a big incentive to push, push, push in the gym so that you can make it to some of these, these ancillary things. And maybe you don't end up being the greatest gymnast in the world, but if you can compete at that level for a while, you can end up being a phenomenal athlete overall and getting a lot out of the sport. Yeah. You know, you know, Brian, I think that the track record for the junior elite program, the future star program kind of speaks for itself. You know what I mean? And uh, like Mark Yancey and a lot of the guys, they'll tell you there hasn't been a U.S. men's Olympic gymnast that hasn't gone through the program since the inception. Um, right. And and one thing I want you to know, if you have a kid that's been working his way up through the system and and it appears he wants to do this throughout his entire high school career, if you aren't willing to put that in front of them and go, Hey, this is what the program is. I want to see if you can do it. If you don't give them that opportunity, you, you might have some backlash from that kid. You know what I mean? That you got to give them that, the opportunity to, to be successful in any way you can. And sometimes that's putting them in, in the future stars um, or, or the junior elite program. You know what I mean? I, if, if you don't provide them the opportunity, you never know what you're, they're going to do if, But if you provide the opportunity and they don't take advantage of it, that's on them, in my opinion. If I, you know, if I provide opportunity, that then I did my job. You know what I mean. And if I and if I if I'm willing to wake up really early in the morning and go to the gym, and we're the only ones there, and I only have half the lights on, so I'm trying to save electricity, and uh, and they get that input that uh, that perception that I'm willing to show up early so that you can be successful, then they're going to put 110 percent in. Yeah. So it comes back to you know who are you as a coach. Mm-hmm. Figure that out first. Okay. Are you willing to, are you willing to take the path? Yeah. Now, once you're willing to take the path, then it's, it's, you know, you just, you guide the gymnast along and then you find out who's willing to take the path. And as you're doing that, you have to educate the parents as to what this path looks like and the opportunities that lay ahead and an understanding that they're just opportunities. We don't know if they're going to come true or they don't know if they're going to be real or not. But it's an opportunity. Are you going to take it or no? It's you can't have half and 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 still try. It's you're going to go down this path with me or you're not. And uh, you know it's it's tricky to figure all of that out. But I think it starts with the coach, like you said. Um, if they figure out who they are, they want to they want these athletes to be at that level, and they want themselves to be at that level. Then after they've made the commitment, start getting your team to make the commitment. And then after your team makes the commitment, then, you know, stay, you know, put together a good plan and stay the course uh, and, and keep learning. You know, contact Gene, contact Tom Meadows, contact Mark Yancey, contact your boss, Scott. He's got a lot to offer. You know, contact these guys, Mizo, contact them and pick their brains about, hey, what is this going to take? What am I going to, what am I missing? Get some help from everyone that's being successful in the sport because those guys that are successful in the sport didn't get there by themselves. And I know in the past, some people have pretended that they did it all by themselves, but they're full of it. They had a lot of help. 
And that's the only way you're going to get there as a coach is if you reach out and, you know, hey, stay tuned to Brian and Brian. We're going to deliver a lot of great content over the months to come. We've got a lot of stuff you know, planned out. But contact these other coaches that are in that world and they're already living it. They're already doing it and find out what they're doing and how they're doing it and what they're incentivizing their guys in their gym to keep going and pushing through the hard days and uh you know the sore the sore body and all that stuff that you know just comes with being an athlete um what is it going to take to be there and then what are the rewards at the end so yeah. you know brian hope that answers the question for yeah. hope that answers the question for, for matt i mean it really comes down to what do you want what do you want what are you willing to do to get it are you willing to wake up early are you willing to stay late you know are you willing to come in that that extra day on the weekend? Are are you? Yeah, yeah. You know, you decide what you want as a coach, and then you you give the options to the athletes, and then you help them make great decisions, guys. Exactly. You know the 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 funny thing about it is, uh, you know, we're talking about it from the athlete and the coach's perspective, kind of. But you know, it kind of boils down to the same thing with the uh, you know, if you're the coach and the gym owner, you know, where do you want your gym to be? Are you willing to put in the time and the effort to to get there, I mean, all the stuff we're talking about is is so, so transferable in so many different aspects of life. Think about what you're offering, the opportunity you're really offering your athlete. It's more than just gymnastics, and it's more than themselves. Like you said, it's bigger than them. This is something that's going to be able to – they're going to be able to transfer into all parts of their life going forward, no matter if they make Olympic Games or not. Amen. So. I think it's, I think it's a, there's a lot a lot of good stuff here. So I think everyone needs to get over and check out the sponsor link and go take the assessment. I, I agree. It, it's worth it, guys. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing athletes. We're pushing gyms. Uh, we're going to start berating our other uh, people that have been on the show. Be like, hey, have you taken it? What do you think? So anybody new that's uh, that's coming on to speak with us, they're going to be asked that first thing. And uh, I hope they give us a good answer. I really do. It's such a great program, guys. I, I, I wouldn't endorse it if I didn't believe in it. Um, so take the time. Take the assessment. If you don't like what the assessment says at the end, if that's not you, let us know. Let them know. Tr trust me. They they want to uh, to improve their products. They are a, a group of people who desperately want to help people improve their sport and their program and their business. And what's really cool is if you get in and you do the assessment now and you become part of the the right profile family, so to speak, then hopefully we can get some of the, you know, as we grow the program, we get more people taking the assessment, then the people that we're equating at our athletes to will actually fall into our sport because right now it's heavily weighted towards, you know, basketball, football, all of that, which is still applicable. The, the personalities are still perfectly alignable and applicable, but you know some of the names aren't as well known by this sport or that sport or another sport, but you'll be part of something that is really cool because you'll be part of the database that shows that you, know, you are the same uh, personality as Uchimura, or you're oh. the same personality as Jonathan Horton, or you're the same, and that's what these guys are trying to to build is a is something for gymnastics, and that's why they contacted Brian Bryant. That's why we endorsed it because we want to be part of that and uh, be able to help the community. So get over there and check out the show notes. The mental gym is phenomenal. I mean, that is you can do the the lessons on your phone. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. So hey, anything to close? Enjoy your weekend and be glad you don't have jury duty on Monday. Jury duty. That's right. Oh man, I got to do my civic duty. You got to do your civic duty. Yeah. So how many hours is that? Uh, as long as they tell me to be there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and of course, it'll be your luck because you're one of those uh, those guys that speaks his mind. It's kind of an honest guy that you'll get put on the jury. And made foreman for like a seven day jury, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Scott will be so happy. <laughs> he's a, yeah. He's out of town. All right. <laughs> He's out of town. All right, guys, we'll see you. Brian, it's a good show. Yeah. We're gone. Later, guys.